Oceans cover a lot of Minecraft's overworld, but most players don't know it that well, so learn everything you need to know about aquatic Minecraft with this ocean guide. There are five main ocean biomes that generate in this part of the world. Obviously, oceans generating in Minecraft is what forms continents, and are really a vital part of making the Minecraft overworld feel a little bit like real life. But what's also really important to know about oceans is that their highest level of water is always going to be on Y62. That's because because the water level or sea level in Minecraft is Y63, so that would be like right here, whereas Y62 is here, so more or less the sea level will only go up to the very bottom of Y63. However, in terms of the depths of the Minecraft ocean, there's a lot more variation. Generally deep oceans will only generate down to about Y35, but of course because of a lot of variation that you can get in Minecraft's terrain as well as aquifer caves, sometimes part of the ocean can extend all the way down to the deep slate layer. There's two main depths of oceans, and they're regarded as different biomes. The first one is just ocean, as it goes down to approximately Y45, whereas then there's the deep ocean, which goes down to approximately Y30 or Y35. But due to the generation changes of Minecraft 1.18 and onwards, the depth of oceans can be much more variable than you would think, and oftentimes will seem to not even match up with the biome that it is. But strangely enough, the level of the ocean floor can be so high up that it actually goes above the water. This will form very small islands that sort of have a muted color of grass. And what's crazy is that these islands can actually become big enough that there are full trees on there, really making a ocean biome island, which is kind of a strange thing. Also something interesting, in almost every ocean biome, the blocks that generate beneath the surface of the water on the ocean floor are determined by the height. So you get this kind of strange gravel, sand, dirt, and clay mixture if it generates super high up. And then the standard type of material that generates with that ocean biome will be there if it's a little bit lower and not so close to the surface. Now when exploring any type of ocean you want to have the right equipment with you and there's a lot of different things you can bring to make the ocean exploration experience be better. So first of all turtle shell helmets are great as they do give you respiration. You can notice I have water breathing for 10 seconds when I go in the water of course that starts to count down but the second I go above the water that'll instantly reset. The other thing is both the aqua affinity and the Respiration 3 enchantment are really good for the Turtle Shell Helmet or really any underwater exploration helmet as the Aqua Affinity makes it so you can mine things faster when you're underwater and Respiration will help you breathe underwater for a lot longer as well as that Trident. So for instance, a Loyalty or a Riptide Trident are both really good tools if you want to be exploring the ocean. Of course, these are obtained from Trident Drowns. The one type of Trident is great as you can throw it an enemy and it'll come back to you and also also, if you have the impaling enchantment on it, it does extra damage for mobs that are in the water if you're in bedrock, or for aquatic mobs if you're in java. And then the riptide trident is awesome for traveling really quickly through the water, and also being able to fly up above the water and sort of get a better view of what's around. But there's some other things you may not think of, so for instance a lily pad is really good, as you can place it on top of the water and then build off of it if you're trying to build let's say a base or some sort of a station. Also, if you're in bedrock, the trident drowns are really common, so having a shield to defend against that is a really good choice. Also, night vision potions are really useful if you're above the water, and even if you're in the water itself, you can still see a little bit better. And potions of water breathing are really one of the best overall items, in fact, probably the best item that you could possibly bring when exploring the ocean, as one that has its effect duration increased will let you swim underwater effectively for eight minutes without any issue of drowning. Although of course there are other ways of getting air and you should probably bring those with you as well. So for instance a magma block works in both bedrock and java edition, but there's also some air blocks that are super useful if you are in java. So for instance doors, you can place those down, go inside of that, and have an air pocket to sort of stay in. Finally, we obviously all know that boats are a great tool for exploring the ocean, especially if you go into third person you can sort of get a good overhead view of what things there are, but of course that is fairly obvious and something you can do that's even better than that is a boat with chest. So unless you're bringing another mob with you or a player, having the chest boat from Minecraft 1.19 is definitely a useful way of having storage as you move around the ocean, maybe collecting the treasures that you have. Just be aware of course of trident drowns as those can destroy boats and then all your items will be all over the ocean floor. Now as I did say once before, there are five main types of oceans and I'm going to go over all of those now as I think it's really important to know how every single ocean biome works so that you can 
effectively use them, and know where to go for which items and which commodities. So to start off, we have the Frozen Ocean. The Frozen Ocean consists of icebergs made out of snow, packed ice, and occasionally blue ice. Something you may notice is although some of the icebergs are sort of more smooth, a lot of them generate incredibly sharply, and that's actually new as of Minecraft 1.18. As the world generation engine was changed, the shape of the icebergs did change somewhat. And something important you may not know about the frozen ocean is that they have varying temperatures. So more or less what that means is that certain parts of the frozen ocean will have ice that'll freeze over the surface, and certain points don't. And so basically, if part of the frozen ocean generates with ice on it on the surface of the water, then that part will always freeze again. If let's say there's some exposed water in any part of that block on the X and Z axis. And so for instance, if we were to break these two blocks of ice here, or at least put a block next to them so the ice could spread back there, they would regrow. But let's say these areas here that all have water but no ice on them but are still in the frozen ocean, those will not slowly turn into ice because there is that temperature variation. So if you want to make an ice farm in the frozen ocean, you'll want to make sure to set out and mine out an area that is already frozen before you went there. Now there are a lot of different mobs that generate in this biome. The first one being the polar bear. And the one important thing to know about the polar bear is that they're completely neutral and will not attack you unless you attack them, except for the scenario in which they have a baby. So for instance, because there's a baby polar bear in the area around where these adult polar bears are, they're now going to chase me and try and attack me. And you also want to be very careful as strays can spawn at night if you're in the frozen ocean biome. And because their arrows do give you slowness, it's really important not to get hit by that as then it can make other mobs when trying to attack you be able to get up to you a lot quicker. And underneath the surface of the water, we have cod that generate in this frozen ocean, as well as squids. Oftentimes as well, you'll have drown that generate underneath here. Also in Bedrock Edition, rabbits can generate on the surface of the frozen ocean, and cod can generate in the water. The ocean floor of the frozen ocean has literally no plants in it. It's a completely devoid of life place, with not even a little bit of seagrass to make it seem more alive. And as well as that, if you're in the Java edition of Minecraft and in the deep frozen ocean variant, that surface layer of standard ice that generates will not be there, but instead it'll just be icebergs with absolutely no ice that generates over the main surface of the water. So that's a great way of knowing if you're in the deep ocean or not, if you're in Java, is whether or not there's that icy surface. And of course the big treasure in the frozen ocean is the blue ice. This generates two places. The first one is on the side of ice and sort of small clusters like you can see right here. It's a sort of ice that almost resembles clouds in the sky and is the darkest of blues. So there's three ones right here. These clusters tend to comprise about 64 blocks of blue ice, but it does depend. But there's one much rarer way that the blue ice can generate inside of the frozen ocean, and that's by generating in one giant blue ice iceberg. For instance, this one on the surface of the water here, it has solid blue ice all the way around. Instead of just having small clusters of blue ice on the largest icebergs, like that's normally the place you find it, there's actually this massive iceberg of it. As we transition from the frozen ocean into the cold ocean, you can see two distinct differences. First of all, the water color does change to be a little bit lighter, but as well as that, all the icebergs are gone, and there is kelp here, as well as seagrass. However, if you're in the standard non-deep cold ocean, then there's not very much seagrass at all, but the amount of seagrass that generates in is made much more if you're in the deep cold ocean. There is still a gravel sea floor with the cold ocean just like the frozen ocean. And cod can now survive in this environment if you're in Java edition. So we have squid, salmon, and cod that can generate inside of the cold ocean. Also if you're in bedrock edition, dolphins can be inside of the cold ocean. But in Java edition they just will not spawn in here. And on from the cold ocean to the next warmest ocean that is quite nearby here and you can see the transition to it. So this is sort of the standard ocean or the main ocean biome. In the world files it's literally just referred to as ocean and more or less this is sort of the normal temperature ocean that comprises a lot of the ocean throughout the Minecraft world. You can notice the color of the water is again a little bit brighter than it was on the cold or the frozen and a couple other things change about this biome. First of all of course it is a gravel sea floor with kelp and seagrass. However the amount of seagrass here is not reduced in the standard variant of the ocean. And what's really awesome about this is that we now have the dolphins that generate inside of this ocean biome. But as well as these amazing dolphins, the squid mob can generate inside of the standard ocean, 
and COD can generate here as well. And as you can see, COD can generate here as well, and in Bedrock, Salmon can also. However, Salmon cannot generate inside of the Standard Ocean if you are in Java Edition. If you're in the Deep Ocean variant of the ocean, you have many more caves and ravines that spawn on the bottom of this, much more than it would be on the Standard variant. And as well as that, for whatever reason, Tall Seagrass generates much more frequently in this Deep variant. As you can see here, there's a lot of it, and there's also many caves and ravines that are intersecting the bottom of this. Let's eat things up just a little bit more from traveling from the standard ocean into the lukewarm ocean. Now the lukewarm ocean is a very interesting biome, and that's because of several reasons. The first one you may notice is that the ocean floor surface has completely changed. It's gone from being gravel, which is all the other ocean biomes, to now being covered in sand. This is kind of a cool thing, as of course not only is sand a really nice looking color for the surface of the water, but as well as that it does seem to represent a warmer biome, and if you're trying to collect some sand or some gravel on the ocean floor, you have both ingredients to concrete right here. However, as well as generating with sand instead of gravel on the ocean surface, something you can probably tell already is that there's less kelp that generates around this biome. And there's also more seagrass. In fact, it's crazy how obvious this is with just massive patches of seagrass and much more reduced patches of kelp. And if you're in the deep lukewarm ocean, there is even more of the seagrass than there was in the standard lukewarm ocean. The types of fish that generate inside of this biome are drastically changed as we now have tropical fish here, but things like the squids do still generate inside of this biome, and having these frequent tropical fish is pretty cool. Now something that's important to know is that you can also have puffer fish generate inside of this biome if you are in Java edition, however they cannot in Bedrock edition. So if you're trying to collect some puffer fish, make sure to not do it in this biome if you are in Bedrock. But it's also a great place to collect the tropical fish if you're in Bedrock Edition, because then you do not have to worry about getting hurt by the puffer fish. Salmon can also generate here in Bedrock Edition, and in both editions. We have the dolphin mob that can be here, making this a really cool biome to sort of swim around with the dolphin with the bright colored water, nice plants, and of course this fun dolphin to play with. But there are no cod or salmon here in Java, and only salmon in bedrock, so in terms of fish to eat, you do want to go to a colder biome. And finally, we're going to turn the temperature all the way up, going from the lukewarm ocean to the warmest ocean inside of Minecraft, and that is the warm ocean. And what makes the warm ocean probably the most popular type of ocean is the fact that inside of a large percentage of this biome, we have coral reefs that generate in. Now to be fair, there is also a large percentage of the warm ocean that is not coral reefs, but is simply seagrass. You'll notice there is no kelp that generates inside of this biome. The ocean floor also does have sand on it, however there is no deep variant of this biome. But that doesn't mean quite a lot, because of course in Minecraft 1.18 and further on, there's so much variance in height anyway. For instance, at the depth I am right now, I'm more or less at the depth of a deep ocean, and then of course some of the coral reef will generate more where you'd think a standard ocean would be. Something also really good to know is even if you're not in the coral reef part of the warm ocean, if you bone meal the sand on the ground, you will get some corals that generate along with the seagrass. As usually, bone milling the ground in an ocean or even underwater will give you seagrass, However, in this biome, also some assorted fans and corals will be here. Now, in terms of the coral reefs themselves, there are four main parts and five variants. There is the coral fans. These are the things that can be on the side of the coral as well as the top of it and sort of have this strange fan-like look. Then, of course, there's just standard coral. This can only be on the top of blocks. There's also coral blocks. And finally, there are sea pickles. This is an underwater light source, which makes the coral reef much easier to see in. There are five colors of coral. The pink one is called brain coral. The purple one is called bubble coral. This yellow coral is known as horn coral. Then the blue coral is known as tube coral. And finally, red coral is fire coral. You can actually break these without a silk touch pickaxe. It will just instantly drop you the dead version of the block. However, you cannot obtain it all, dead or living, the standard coral or the coral fans, unless you have silk touch. Breaking the corals and the coral fans with your silk touch pickaxe, or really any silk touch tool you want, it doesn't matter, does not reduce the durability at all. So maybe you found a golden hoe in a ruined portal that has silk touch on it. This could actually be your perfect coral collecting tool, as there's no worry about it breaking, it can last infinitely, 
collecting all these fans and the non-solid items. Also, if you bone meal a sea pickle on the ocean floor, nothing will happen. You will get particles and bone meal will be used, but it just will not grow and spread. But if you want to farm these underwater light sources that only generate inside of the warm ocean, then simply bone meal them when they're on top of coral with empty coral blocks around it. And when you do that, they will spread really effectively. You can break those really easily as they do instantly break. You don't even need silk touch. And with an honestly very small amount of bone meal, you can collect a huge amount of the sea pickles. Especially since if you smelt sea pickles in a furnace, they'll turn directly into lime dye. Also, something you may notice if you're in Bedrock Edition is that this coral reef does not look like the Bedrock Edition coral reef. And that's because coral reefs are probably the feature that varies the most between both versions. You see in Bedrock Edition, corals generate differently in two ways. The first one is a percentage of the corals generate in as dead corals, to represent that in real life, coral reefs have a percentage of them that are dead. But as well as that, the actual generation of how the coral is in the world is much different. Where instead of in Java, when the corals are sort of in these set shapes that can generate in different colors and patterns, in Bedrock, they sort of form these massive conglomerates of different coral types what mobs generate inside of the warm ocean. Well, of course, we have lots of tropical fish that are here, but as well as that, we have the puffer fish. Also, because they're the only mob that generates inside of literally every single aquatic biome, we also have these squids here inside of the warm ocean. And we also have the adorable dolphin, which is awesome as then we can fly through this beautiful coral reef. And tropical fish do generate here very commonly in lots of different variants. There's over 3,000 different variants of tropical fish. However, 90% of tropical fish are never going to be one of those rare variants. So if you happen to see a tropical fish that looks very rare, you should probably pick it up as you may never again in your entire life see a fish like that generate inside of Minecraft. No drowned will generate inside of the coral reef. Every other ocean biome will have the drowned in it, but the coral reef will not have any drowned here. So if you're right in the center of a coral reef, it could be a perfect place to throw down a conduit and make an underwater base. And the final ocean related biome we're going to look at is underwater caves. Now flooded caves can generate in many different places places, but they do tend to generate much more commonly if you're underneath an ocean biome. Or even if you're just near an ocean biome, like for instance this flooded cave right here is technically in the mesa biome, but because it's so close to the river we still have that flooded cave. Flooded caves themselves are fairly boring, not even featuring seagrass, however there are some things you should know about them. This is the biome where you find the infamous glow squid. Now of course the glow squid's glow ink sack has two abilities to it and that is to make glow item frames as well as to make science text more bright. So if you want to do either of these things inside of Minecraft, you want to find an underwater cave. As well as that, one unique piece of generation in the underwater cave are these magma blocks that generate at the very bottom of the floor of these caves. These are almost in a way a remnant of a feature we used to have before 1.18, where there would be these massive lava obsidian and magma ravines that would generate somewhat commonly inside of the oceans, and they were a favorite of speedrunners to get to the nether, but those are no longer inside of the game. All we have now is just rare pockets of magma blocks, but they can still be really good if you're trying to get some air. Also, there's no air exposure rule to limit ores generation, so you can notice here there is a massive amount of ores on the surface of this cave, so maybe go to an underwater cave if you're trying to get some diamonds or some lapis. I'll be posting a video soon about underwater structures, as I couldn't cover everything about oceans in this video, but be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this. Goodbye!